What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of The Gantry. I know it's been a while, but work and life's been getting in the way lately. But today we got a special one for you. We've got two Americans in the starting 11. We've got Christian Pulisic battling Alfredo Morales. It's Dortmund versus Ingolstadt. The Gantry is back, so get hyped and enjoy the video. All right, guys, uh, just before kickoff, so let's get started on our keys to the match. We're gonna start with Dortmund. Uh, Jared, what are the keys for uh, Dortmund to get the victory today? Uh, well, no Tim Bailey today. Uh, do we know why yet? I think maybe we're, they're just resting him. Could be just resting I him. I haven't heard he's hurt, but he's not on the bench and he's not uh, listening to the injuries. So anyway, no Tim Bailey today. Pulisic playing more centrally, it looks like. Uh, it's gonna be that kind of creative playmaker along with Kigawa feeding into Aubameyang, obviously the big goal scorer for them. Uh, so I think a lot of the key is gonna be on Pulisic's creativity. We already know what Kigawa brings to the table centrally, but. Pulisic's been a great goal scoring for him lately. Uh, bagged, what, three in uh, recent weeks? Yeah, he just scored in DFB Pokal, uh, so he's a lot of, he has a lot of confidence right now. Yeah, uh, and on the, uh, the flip side of that coin, I think Dortmund just need to be careful. They don't bomb too forward too much on the wings. Uh, their fullbacks have a tendency to get too far forward, kind of lose their shape sometimes, but I don't think that's going to be a huge problem because Ingolstadt who aren't a huge attacking threat, but I'll let you uh, elaborate on that a little more. Well, we'll see. Uh, for Ingolstadt, I think uh, a big part well, they're obviously outmatched talent-wise, um, but so I think a big part of their either getting a victory or getting a victory or getting just one point out of this game is the midfield of Cohen and Morales. Uh, they're really gonna have to be positionally disciplined and make sure they get back and uh, track their runners, track the runs of Kagawa and Pulisic, um, and just help defend and cut off that uh, cut off that supply yeah. to their that insane Dortmund attack. So that's what I think the team's gonna have to do. The last, the reverse fixture uh, of this match was 3-3, so hopefully we're gonna see a bunch of goals in this one. Uh, so we'll start off with the first half. Okay guys, so the first half just started. Uh, both teams sort of feeling things out, of course, like in every match in the first 20 minutes. Uh, so far, Ingolstadt have a little bit of possession, which is kind of surprising. Uh, you'd like to think Dortmund that would, uh, with all the quality they have, even though this is kind of like a makeshift lineup that, um, Especially playing at Signal Iduna, that they'd want to get on the ball as much as possible and uh, really put the pressure on Ingolstadt early on. But so far, Ingolstadt have had most of the ball. They're not showing any fear. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, this is why I fucking love the Bundesliga, man. Yeah. Ingolstadt are sitting like rock, almost rock bottom. They're second play, second from bottom. You know, they show a lot of heart coming out here. They still want to play football. I think, in my opinion, the Bundesliga, hot take, hashtag hot take. I think the Bundesliga is the most competitive league in the world. So it's just so exciting. And I've been wanting to do a Bundesliga game uh, for a while on the gantry. And finally, we're, we're getting one done. Good ball. Dude, Schmelzer. Oh! Is that, oh my god. That Dude. was so quick. That ball from Schmelzer is unbelievable. It's a damn good finish, too. It was behind him. Yeah. 14th minute. Schmelzer bombs down the left-hand side, puts in a beautiful cross. I, can't, I don't know who put in that ball to Schmelzer, but it was a great ball into Schmelzer. He puts in a perfect ball to Aubameyang. He finishes first time with his left foot near post, and it's already 1-0 to Dortmund. He was beyond the near post, and yeah. the ball was behind him. Yeah. That was incredible. Five minutes later, after the Dortmund goal, he should have a corner. Oh, it's clear wow. up the line. And Berkey Dude. punches out. It's saved off the line. I, don't, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell who that, was, who that was. It was either Berkey or one of the Dortmund defenders. But very close for, to an equalizer for Ingolstadt. But we're half an hour in, and after this goal, I think it's been a pretty even, even affair. What do you yeah. think? No, definitely. Ingolstadt has been dangerous, especially on the set pieces. They have uh, another one here. Yep, playing really well as a team. Calls them down pretty well. Yeah, you see every time they lose possession, uh, they're kind of swarming the ball, they're trying to get possession back. Ingolstadt have had a lot of set pieces so far, but Dortmund are pretty much stifling every single opportunity. From what I've gathered though, it's kind of Ingolstadt's game. They play almost like a, like a lower table English team. Yeah, we know we can't pass the view, but we're gonna try to win set. Well, they're not even doing a bad job at like keeping possession. Yeah. I think a lower level Bundesliga side will fuck up like Burnley or- Yeah, like I agree. Sunderland. Uh oh, here come Ingolstadt. Oh, dude, what a Berkey, save from bro. Berkey. Oh. Jesus Christ. Dude, Berkey has been so good this game. That's twice the Ingolstadt have gotten forward. Let's go, Berkey, getting hyped, dude. Uh, that's twice the Ingolstadt have gotten forward and caused a ton of problems for this back line. Over the course of this first half, I think that Dortmund have looked pretty confident in defense every time Ingolstadt come forward, but 
That's been two times that the he's opportunities had. opportunities are there. Yeah, that's been two times that Berkey has had to save. Yeah. Um, save Dortmund from conceding a goal. Oh, full stretch. Gets up, saves another one. Dude. Wow, that's impressive, man. Kid's a star. Uh, Halftime whistle just blew. Uh, it's still 1 0 Bruce Dorman. It's been pretty entertaining, entertaining first half so far. Uh, but let's get to some halftime thoughts. Okay, just like we just said, it's halftime. Uh, so, Jared, uh, just overall thoughts on the first half. Yeah, so uh, despite Dortmund being up 1 0 through a fantastic uh, run of play through Kigawa to Schmelzer to Obama Yang with an incredible finish from a ball behind him. Uh, you know, put that aside and actually look at the game, and I think that Ingolstadt have probably executed their game plan better than Dortmund have. Uh, Dortmund, while having possession for uh, the majority of the game so far, haven't really had their kind of meaningful, like, final third possession that you're used to, where they're set up around the box trying to pick their way through. Um, haven't really been able to do that. Ingolstadt have had a, a pretty good defensive shape for most of the game. Uh, and, and to the counterpoint to that, Ingolstadt's whole game plan set pieces, set pieces, set pieces, and they've, they've been able to find those set piece attempts and they've come close a few times thanks to Roman Berkey uh, coming up big, otherwise this game would be tied or maybe even 2-1 Ingolstadt. Yeah, I think uh, one criticism from Ingolstadt is that they've been pretty fucking narrow, actually. Yeah. They've been trying to like force balls inside and it's been pretty easy for Dorman overall to defend, but Ingolstadt have had like at least two uh, really bright spots where Berkey's had to come up big. Um, so again, like Dortmund, like you said, have had the bulk of the possession. They've been working well mm -hmm. down the flanks, but not a lot of dangerous possession in and around the 18-yard box. Right. right. Um, but again, I think uh, Ingolstadt just need to do sort of more of the same. Maybe try to work the ball out wide a little bit more often. Yeah. Um, I think Lascano has been a workhorse for them. He's been all over the pitch. Uh, he's been drawing a lot of free kicks, like we were just saying. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's yeah. a gritty player and he's a gritty forward. Gritty is a good way to describe yeah. him. So I, like I think, him. yeah, more of the same from Ingolstadt. Maybe try to work the ball down the flanks a little bit more. And I think uh, Dortmund would be a little bit better off the ball. I think their movement off the ball has been a little sluggish. Right. You haven't seen Pulisic on the ball very often. Right. Um, so yeah, I think their movement in the final third especially needs to be a bit better in the second half. Anything else? Um, yeah, just one final thought on, on Ingolstadt being narrow. I was kind of just thinking as you said that, maybe that has something to do with, with Dortmund's shape because they seem to play so wide with their, their you know, attacking fullbacks and maybe that's almost kind of funneling uh, Ingolstadt a little more narrow. Like yeah. it's opening up space a little more narrow and that's why they're just kind of naturally going that way. I don't know. But Dortmund problem. are doing a great job at staying compact and, right. and defending inside out. Yeah. And it's sort of what you just said sort of makes them predictable. They are forcing them inside. Right. So uh, I think like players like uh, Castro are just really defensively and positionally disciplined. Yeah, he's, he's, made made a few, back. he's made a few stellar tackles already this game. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty guys, so that's it for halftime. Uh, we'll see you at the beginning of the second half. And we're back. So second half just started. Uh, hopefully get some goals, see some fireworks. <laughs> hopefully we see uh, at least one of the Americans score. Be nice. Be quite nice. Fake. Oh, uh -oh. trouble. Oh, that's a penalty. It's got to be a penalty. Oh my goodness, dude. So it's a ball in that triggers and finds its way to Lascano. Berkey comes out, gets all of Lascano, reaches for the ball with his hand. After he really went that's through the penalty. player, that's a penalty, man. That's a big moment in this match if uh, Dorman go on to win it 1-0. Yup. I honestly think that if Berkey hadn't been so decisive and confident in the first half, he doesn't get that call in his favor yeah. in the second half. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he made just, such clean tackles and he saves. Was just, yeah, he was just so commanding and, 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 and like powerful in the first half, you know? Wow. Like if you look shaky, you don't get that call. Right, right. So it's 55 minutes. Uh, Rafael Guerrero is coming off for Julian Weigel. So you guys think there's like a change of uh, formation there? Something Tugel's saying need to be a little bit more defensive with sound, I guess? Yeah. Well, since Weigel's coming on, it's, it looks like Dorman are getting forward with more numbers. Yeah. They want their second goal. They want to close this game out. Yeah. Especially being at home against a, a bottom feeder. Right. They've got to get these three points to close the distance between them and Leipzig. Yep. English shot have definitely been dangerous, too. Yeah. Dorman want to get a little cushion here. I like seeing Castro being at the top of, like, the 18 there. Like, yeah. I feel like he's re most dangerous there than sitting deep. Like, I feel like he... If he's going to be on the field, Weigel needs to be there to sort of back well, him up so he can express himself. Yeah, no, I definitely think he's great going forward, but he's he's box to box, man. Like, he's, yeah. he's useful everywhere in the in the midfield. I just mean, like, I guess he's a little bit more creative sitting the, at the top of yeah. the than Weigel is. And, yeah. And Weigel's more physical defensively. It definitely frees him up. 
having Vigel in there yeah. to sit a little deeper and play the metronome, you know? Yeah. Well, we're 75 minutes in, and uh, Ingolstadt make their first change. It's Sonny Kittle coming off for Pascal Gross. We have no idea who either of those people are. Nope. So I wish we could give you more insight on how that could change the game. Sorry, Pascal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no. Christian coming off. All right. 76 minutes, or 77th minute, I guess. Christian has been a little bit ineffective yeah. up until now. He hasn't really seen a ton of the ball, uh, but Andre Sherla coming on for him. Sherla does track back a fair amount, doesn't he? So yeah. I think maybe that's a kind of a safe substitution. It gives you a little more attacking teeth, but you know that he's going to play his role. It does seem that like uh, Tuchel's been like pretty conservative with the subs. Yeah. Okay, so we got about eight minutes left. Uh, Mikel Marino is coming on for Gonzalo Castro. I, I mean, he, I know Athletic won him. I'm a fan of Berkey, man. Hard nose, confident, good fucking keeper. I yep. like his attitude, like gets up, slaps his hand. Like, yep. I like him. Well, he's come up big for Dorman, who I think have been unconvincing at best this yeah. game. I think they've had a lot of trouble playing the ball out, out from the back. Yep. Because Ingolstadt have been putting a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's really strange too, because like Ingolstadt are making up for the fact that they can't hold possession by just pressuring Dorman out of their game. Yeah. They're really cutting off a lot of passing lanes. Yeah. Dorman, Dorman is just giving the ball away left and right right yeah. now. I was like, damn, if they could, if they were just 10, 20% more technically skilled, you know, like they could just, they would be so much better. Cause yeah. like, obviously the work rate's there. They keep good shape. They have a game plan. Yeah. Oh, that's nice work from Liscano. Oh, that's so indicative of how English shot had been this entire game. Oh, that was massive. Matt at the center that's... half, gets all the way forward, gets on the end of a nice turn from Lascano, just stops on a dime, lays the ball off to Matip, and Matip tries to curl it with his left foot, and there was never any chance of that going yeah, on frame. Yeah, you know, you gotta feel for him because that's not where he yeah. is probably used to being. That's not, like, positionally. He's, he probably didn't start this game thinking, I'm gonna end up two yards <laughs> behind the penalty box with, like, time to shoot. But, but at least he took the shot. Yeah. You know, a lot of players would probably hesitate right there. Just didn't have the composure in front of goal, you know? He had the composure I mean, over center half. Yeah. <laughs> We got four minutes of added time. It looks like Alfredo Morales came on. Didn't quite see who came on for him, uh, but a pretty anonymous uh, showing from Alfredo Morales. He's tried to get forward, but he's really played the role of sort of just, I think most of this English style midfield of just trying to disrupt passing lanes from Dortmund, which they've been, they've been pretty decent at. So in that respect, maybe he did a good, he had a pretty decent game. Yeah. But in terms of like creating actual chances, I don't think anyone on this English style side has really done that at all. Yeah. Not Other a, than from set pieces, of course. Yeah, not a great showing from either of the Americans in this game, though, to be honest. Yeah, uh, true. Final whistle blows. Dorman somehow see out the 1-0 win. Uh, let's get some final thoughts. All right, some final thoughts. Pretty even affair, I think. Dorman just barely scraped, scraped those uh, three points away from Ingolstadt. Um, yeah, so what do you think? I uh, mean, Watching that game, you really couldn't tell there was a 15 place gap between those two teams. Yeah. Uh, I, Dortmund were not great, to say the least. No. There was not a lot of attacking fluidity, save for the one goal where, uh, you know, the two kind of mainstays of the team, uh, Schmelzer and Aubameyang, who've been there for, you know, Years. quite some time together. Yeah. They, they linked up down that left hand side and scored a goal. But other than that, working through the midfield, they were just getting out pressed outworked uh, by a team that was not as technically gifted as them. Yeah. Um, I gotta wonder if that has something to do with just the, the drastic personnel changes and the drastic position changes that come under playing under Thomas Tuchel. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's there's definitely something was not ticking today for, for Bruce J. Dorman. Yeah, I mean, you gotta say with this English stop side, they have a lot of heart, they have a lot of grit, they work hard, but I think you made a good point during the match that they just lack that bit of flair, that bit of quality in the final third to really like, not only like give them energy, but just sort of like, I don't know, like provide some sort of inspiration going forward. Yeah. I think Lascano is a decent striker up top, but I mean, he can't do it all by himself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they did a good job at drawing a lot of free kicks and they were fairly dangerous from those. I think Dortmund overall were pretty comfortable. Um, but again, yeah, I think you made a great point in that like all these sort of positional changes uh, that Tuchel implemented, especially in this game, I think it really throws every player off of their game. Their sort of positional awareness and their awareness of space around them has definitely got to be off. Um, so I think that's uh, definitely a symptom that we saw in this game. So one more thing. We haven't talked about it at all. 
I'm interested to see who your man of the match was that game. Because I, I have a name in mind. I think you know who I'm probably picking. I think probably Schmelzer. He was Schmelzer. very dangerous going forward. And yeah. Obviously very defensively sound. Okay, I was going to say Berkey. Oh, yeah. I think I think you're probably right about that. Schmelzer was great, too, though. He saved their skin more on at least three occasions, yeah. at least twice in that first half that were like clear-cut goal-scoring opportunities for English Dot. Yeah. So I think uh, we can both agree, Roman Berkey, you're the gantry man of the match for this one. Yeah. Uh, um, Schmelzer, close second. Close we love, second. We love you a good so. performance. Uh, but yeah, pretty lackluster from Dortmund overall. Yeah. Uh, a lot of hard work from Ingolstadt, but again, just lacked that quality in the final third to finish. Um, I think ultimately that's what Dortmund have over them is that sort of, yeah. you know, obviously they have Aubameyang, a world-class striker, and that's who, who came up big today. I was impressed with Lascano though. Yeah, he's definitely a good striker, but I think more often than not, he had no support around no him support. To, to lay the ball yeah. off to. So again, those are just our thoughts. Um, hit that subscribe button down here. Hit that thumbs up button. Um, comment as always, see, uh, tell us what you wanna see in the future. Um, and that's it from us. We'll see you in the next episode of The Gantry.